So now we're going to do a more sophisticated lighting analysis, um, daylighting analysis using a plugin for Ecotech called Radiance. So um, that means we have to install Radiance separately on our computer. So you can only do this on a computer where you have administrative rights. That means not, not the school computers which also means that you have to install Ecotect on your own computer, home computer, laptop, and you can download a free copy from Autodesk. Um, you, you Google desktop Radiance, um, you find um, this website, you go to download, you go to um, download desktop Radiance 2.0 beta, you agree, um, and then here, if you actually right click, um, save link as now that it's downloaded I will um, unzip it I need a password which is save energy click the setup you just um, this is important. Don't install it here in the default, but instead install it in the root directory and just call it Radiance. So C backslash Radiance. Okay, that's very important. Uh, complete installation for AutoCAD 2000 is fine. You have to actually tell it where your AutoCAD is. So I'm going to C program files um, Autodesk. Autodesk uh, 2012. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, this is actually you just click next and you just click cancel. Don't worry about that last part, this optics um, part. We don't need that. And that should really. Um, okay, great. Um, now we can open Ecotect, our file and uh, we can see if it works. We go to um, calculate, lighting analysis, export to radiance, um, yeah, luminance image is what we want. We want the radiance control panel to be opened. Uh, sunny sky, ecotech sun angles, interior views. Uh, I just want the normal camera. And this is, now here you can check whether everything worked correctly. Yeah, there should be all green check marks. If there's any of these boxes not checked, you can try to click the fix button and you can uh, select the um, the executable files, The for example, the RAD EXE. It's in the BIN folder within your Radiance directory. The other th uh, potential problem you can encounter is it doesn't find the um, Radiance cp.exe that is actually if you go to file user preferences under tools and utilities Radiance cp you can actually it should be in the root directory of um, Ecotect in my case it's right here okay so these are potential uh, hurdles that you can encounter and we're going to we want to run this in Radiance cp that's the control panel we can give this a name um, if you do this the first time, it's probably going to ask you for that name. And if you know, if it finds the control panel, this is actually the control panel. If not, um, you may have to. Um, the first time you're doing this, you may have to uh, show where the um, Radiance CP.exe file is, and that actually happens to be in the Autodesk um, folder. Ecotech Analysis 2011, and then right there is a file called RadianceCP.exe. So that this is the Radiance Control Panel, uh, and that is exactly what we're looking at here. So in, just in case this doesn't come up, you you know where to find it now, and then um, you should be good to go. You should be able to start the um, the renderings. I'm going to take um, this camera, and I'm going to take uh, this camera into Radiance. So the way this works is you go to Calculate, Lighting Analysis. And instead of clicking Natural Light Levels and continuing through this um, 
step by step here, you actually go to export to radians for more detailed analysis. Okay, so this is um, Ecotech really only gets you so far with daylight analysis. This is this is um, a more a more detailed. Now, um, uh, what you can say now, for example, in Ecotech with a daylight factor analysis, we could only use overcast sky. Here we can use sunny with sun, sunny without sun, intermediate with sun, overcast. So I'm. I want to. I'm going to do sunny with sun because I'm interested in also the the shading um, and light shelves that we have in our model. Use the Ecotech sun angle. So this is not a generic overcast sky. This is actually the specific sun angles. Right now, I am um, December twenty first. Uh, winter solstice at noon. I want the camera normal to be the camera that's that's being rendered and I keep this all at medium for now this you can once you you do you're done playing around and you create the final images you can certainly set this all to high and it says here your radiance insulation looks fine so this is where you have to get we are you need to set the image size um, we can make this a little bit well it's okay it's not going to take that long but if it takes too long you can make it smaller and uh, here you can actually set luminance or illuminance um, I'm interested in luminance which is the actual um, amount of light that is coming off a surface so rather than just calculating the amount of light that falls onto the surface it's actually including the material properties of that surface in calculating how much actually gets reflected off the surface so this is a, 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 a lot more information than the amount that falls on the surface and you will be able to play around with different surface um, characteristics by selecting different materials to see what uh, what the uh, what the effect is. Okay, so I'm just going to hit OK. Now you get uh, the radiance control panel that opens, and I'm going to click this render button right here. Okay, now you're going to get a nice um, MS DOS window that uh, pops up, and uh, it's doing the calculation. So that's going to take a little while. Okay, so this is a radiance view. As you can see, that the um, for some reason the actual frame is not the same frame as in Ecotect. Um, so you're gonna have to actually move the camera back. But I just wanted to get you a first, um, you know, idea of. A, a radiance rendering and it's not you know this is a it's not a, a beautiful rendering in the sense um, that you would use for visualization but it's actually a true rendering in terms of the amount of light that comes into the space and these kind of splotchiness is is just um, we didn't render this at a high resolution and at a high um, accuracy so that you can you can improve a lot um, how this looks but we're not gonna bother until we actually have the final rendering you can see I happen to have uh, both the exterior and interior light shelf uh, turned on in this case. So these two shadows right here are um, coming from these shelves. So you can already see there is a reflection on the column that where the, the light shelf reflects light up the wall and up the, the, up the column. You can overlay a whole series of um, analytical information on top of this rendering. The rendering itself is really not that interesting. Um, the line on the in the windows is the horizon. By the way, I personally have not figured out how to turn this off. Um, it is actually crucial because there's different amount of light coming from the ground than coming from the sky. So that's why this is actually introduced here. It'd be just be nice to maybe not have it um, um, in this image because it's a little confusing. So one thing we can do is we can actually um, overlay contour lines. And the um, um, what this does, it basically 
measures the amount of uh, luminance, the value in uh, candelas per square meter, and um, tells you where does a certain amount of um, luminance stop and the next uh, star. So I'm just going to actually just um, start that. So the information overlay, you say control lines, will keep the scale and the divisions the same. And we're just going to press this um, little play, which means it's going to apply the information overlay onto this image. A little bit of calculation. And we should get a second image. OK, here is the second image. So now we had um, candelas per square meter, and we had a scale of 1,000. So the highest value is a red line, and the lowest one is a blue line. And you can see that the, uh, the 950 um, border is here. Then the next level is 850. So this, is a, this gives you a lot more information as to the exact kind of drop off of light as we move further into the space. And you can already see this is really not the best camera because it doesn't really show enough of the of the surrounding surfaces to really um, give us a good idea about the depth of daylight penetration. But we can fix that. Um, the other thing, so if you actually wanted to have this image coming out, um, one thing you can do very easily is very similar to Ecotect is copy image to clipboard. You open uh, Photoshop. You um, make a new file and you drop it in there okay so you now have the um, analysis file in in Photoshop another overlay you can do is called uh, you actually have to select the original one first before you do that and then you select the um, false color which I find the most helpful one um, okay, so now this is overexposed. So one thing that we um, we could do um, is adjust. So a lot of this, a lot of these values are actually above one thousand candelas per square meter. So it's all red, right? So we're losing a lot of information. Um, and one thing we can do is we could just increase the scale to two thousand so that red is actually two thousand, and then in, it interpolates in between. So if we let Okay, that looks better. So now what's red is actually 2000. Um, it's twice the twice the intensity and and we actually start to see uh, the interior. You can really uh, nicely see um, the again the reflection of the light shelves on the on the vertical surfaces adjacent to the windows and you can also see the um, kind of reddish color here that so there's really some light that's actually being thrown up onto the ceiling which then reflects further into the space. Again I can um, copy image to the clipboard, go to Photoshop, drop it in here. Okay so what do I do with this with this information? Um, it actually is a really good tool to analyze the behavior of your shading and light redirection systems.